Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. So if you don't know who I'm with, this is Beauty by Rosita. And she just did my whole face. Beat, beat, beat. I can't even like describe. I can't even believe that I'm like here Stop. with her right now. That she just did my makeup. Nobody has ever done my makeup before, and so she... I feel honored. <laughs> I'm so honored. Well, Natalie, you're like a freaking natural beauty, so no. we just wanted to pop those green Stop. eyes out and do so, something different. Yes, and it came out amazing. I think so. If you want to see how she got this look on me, then keep on watching. Hi guys, so I'm starting off with the beautiful Natalie and I'm skin prepping her. The first product that I always use on my clients is MAC Softening Lotion. I think of it as an exfoliator without actually having to wash your face. So I like to focus this pretty much everywhere, but especially around that nose crease. I feel like product tends to build up there. And then Natalie has dry skin, so I'm using Embray Lease. I actually use this on Tons of skin types, oily, combo, dry, pretty much everyone gets a little embroidery release in their life. It's just a really nice moisturizing cream that actually has like a built-in primer, which is really nice. It really makes the skin soft. Now I'm applying these Peter Thomas Roth 24 karat gold eye patches. This is going to hydrate the under eye and this is something that I've been including uh, with my clients. Even if they don't have dry under eyes, it's still going to prep that area, depuff that area, and just prep it for concealer and baking and all that. So now I'm just filling in her eyebrows. Clearly she has dark hair, so I'm using the Anastasia Brow Powder. I'm using the Pro Palette, and I kind of just mix colors. I feel like mixing colors just gives me the best, most natural results because hair typically isn't just one tone or one shade and then I'm just cleaning up her brows and I'm using concealer and I'm using the MAC Studio Fix Finish Concealer in NC20 and I'm just sharpening up the brows and cleaning them up if she had any like stray hairs I just want to conceal them and this is going to give the look a bit more of a cleaner look I guess um, but like you guys know I always go back to the brows so this is just going to frame the face for my eyeshadow. I like to start off with the brows, give them a little shape, and then go back to them later on. So now I'm prepping her eyes with a MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot, and I'm just applying this all over her eyelid space just to cancel out any redness, any veins that she may have, any discoloration, and so that the eyeshadow can last a lot longer. And I'm just applying that with a Zoeva brush. I think an eyeshadow primer is something you should definitely never skip. Anastasia Modern Renaissance Palette. I'm using a kind of like beige color just to basically set that paint pot. It's a lot easier to blend your eyeshadows if you do this step. If you just go into your crease color, it's a lot harder to blend. So I'm going to be using all colors from the Modern Renaissance. This is the burnt orange color and I just really really like this in the crease we're gonna be going for something a little bit different a little more out there so I'm just you can obviously use any palette any peachy color for this you don't have to use this exact palette but I do like the palette um, as long as you set the whole lid you know the crease color is gonna go on a lot better so I'm just going in windshield wiper motions I like to kind of create the eye shape with this step and so I love peachy and warm colors because they're very forgiving. And so I'm just kind of creating her eye shape. Like I said, she has really nice lit space so we can do a lot with this. So I was kind of just doing like going with the flow kind of thing. So here I'm creating like a halo and I'm just creating a V shape at the end rather than just a rounded edge. Now I'm going to use this really pretty like burgundy color. And I really like the way purples and pinks look paired with blue and green eyes. I think they just make them pop so much more. So I'm applying this to the crease and I'll have everything listed down below. You don't have to use these exact products, but this is more just to show you my technique and to show you my technique of layering because I think it's very important for me. I layer my shadows, I layer my products, and I think that gives me the best results and lasts really long. So as you can see, I'm just following that shape that I created with the burnt kind of sienna orange color and then I'm adding this to the inner portion of the eye to create that halo effect. Now Natalie has large lids or I guess medium to large lids so this look is pretty easy on her eye shape and so I just wanted to play around get creative with it. Um, she doesn't have much of a hooded eye so I took advantage and I started playing with color 
and I love this because it still is kind of neutral and it's just gonna make her eyes pop so again I'm just applying this to the inner corner and then the crease and then connecting it now I'm applying some gold this is a NYX glitter in gold and I did put some eye candy um, it's kind of like an adhesive just so that the glitter can stay on the lids but I will say that this glitter has a ton of fallout even with the eye candy base so I do want to get the NYX glitter base I've heard it's amazing and also the MAC I think it's like a mixing medium because I heard those are really good so now I'm taking a more detailed brush and I'm just going to basically halo around the gold now with this glitter you really have to like blend a lot because what happens is it can tend to just look like it's placed there so I like to kind of hug the eyeshadow with the other matte colors just so that it looks like I placed it there and not just like a blob of gold glitter so as you can see here I'm hugging the pigment to create that halo and this Sigma brush this precision brush is perfect for this the E36 because it just gets into those little creases and those little detailed spaces and having tons of different types of brushes is so important when you're freelancing because you never know what eye shape you're gonna get you never know what look they're gonna ask for so you need small brushes you need big brushes for instance here I'm using something a little more on the pencil kind of side this is one of my favorite brushes MAC 221 and I'm just applying a bit of a brown so as you can see I'm layering I didn't go in straight with a dark color because that's where it's gonna go really wrong I build and I layer starting from my lightest color to my darkest color and now I'm using the diamond glow powder from artist couture in supernova oh my god I saw an inspiration picture actually one of you guys sent me an inspo picture and then I followed this tutorial based off that picture I'll include a link down below it's so gorgeous and I just fell in love with it so I decided to go with the supernova because in the picture the girl has something like that and I don't know it's just something a little different like you t you don't really typically see pink in the inner corners you typically see white or gold or something like that so pink I don't know it's still kind of neutral but it's just so reflective it's like a blue toned pink and it's just absolutely gorgeous so now I'm applying some mascara and I'm using a disposable spoolie obviously um, if the client has their own mascara it's so much better to use the actual mascara wand but you know if they didn't bring it with them you can use a disposable wand and you know any mascara will do I'm actually not doing any liquid liner at this point I'm applying some base is the Lancome primer I've been loving this it's really good for dry skin again Natalie has dry skin so I'm using products geared towards her skin type now I'm applying some Lily lashes um, lashes are also really important when freelancing you know you need to have tons of different types of lashes I typically only use mink lashes for uh, weddings and like really special events but Natalie's my boo so I threw some lily lashes on her and these last so long so make sure to give your client the box the corresponding box so that they can keep them and save them and just kind of preserve them when they remove them so I'll leave everything like details names everything down below now I'm using my favorite foundation ever <laughs> this is the Estee Lauder double wear I just always go back to this and this is just bomb first I started using the shade tawny and it ended up being a little too light so I'm just adding a bit of a darker color right on top again I love to mix colors I think it's the most natural your skin doesn't have one color in it it's not just one pigment so mixing colors I feel like you really just get it spot on you might get a foundation that's your shade but not your right tone so that's why I like mixing two colors to get the right shade tone and all of that you know a color could be light but it's not yellow enough or it's not pink enough so that's why I like mixing things and so that's why I like having everything in my arsenal I literally want to have all of the Estee Lauder double wear foundations because it's that good it's long wearing and even though she has dry skin I've prepped her so it's not gonna look dry on her but it's gonna last so long now I'm using the Becca under eye corrector and this is just a nice peachy pink color and this one's like a brightening kind of thing I was kind of just testing it out trying it out um, just to cover any darkness that she may have now Natalie has gorgeous freckles but she wanted me to cover them up so we're using this just to cover up any darkness now peach and pink is going to counteract any darkness you have under your eyes so Natalie's under eyes weren't too dark but I still wanted to show you guys this because I know I get that a lot like how do I cover my dark circles step one corrector step two concealer now I'm using a concealer that's a lot lighter than her skin tone I'm using Mac pro Longwear, and do you see this coverage yes this coverage is insane it's awesome you only need a little bit it lasts you forever again it's the pro Longwear 
concealer and I just love it it's so good and I'm using NC 20 and I'm just blending that in trying to be very gentle around her eyes it's a very gentle area so you want to have your client look up and just blend away and just be very careful you don't want to poke them in the eye because then they're gonna be tearing all day and it's not good like you're just gonna have to fix whatever is down there because their eyes are gonna get watery if you poke them so be very gentle um, but don't be afraid and now I'm baking and I'm using the RCMA no color powder you guys always ask me what I like better Laura Mercier or the RCMA honestly this one's great for dry under eyes um, I do love both though now I'm just setting her face. I'm using MAC Studio Fix Powder, and I'm using the shade C5. It's a nice yellow, peachy, kind of golden color. Natalie has a nice tan going on. So I'm just setting her face. I've talked about this before. I think the main part of like this whole video is to show you that I set everything before I go forward in layering. I don't just go ahead and layer tons of bronzer on top of her foundation. I have to set it first. So now I'm just removing any bake. And I'm using a Sigma brush and I'm kind of pressing the product in and also swiping away if you just swipe too hard it gets really dry under there so I've noticed that if I kind of just press it in it kind of helps so just pressing that and making sure there's nothing left over because it will cause some weird lighting situation when you take pictures with flash so make sure you remove any bake that you may have there now I'm contouring and I'm using Bobbi Brown golden lights and I'm using the Kat Von D shade and contour brush i'm using the angled side obviously to give her a slight contour this is just kind of mapping out where i'm going to be bronzing and furthermore contouring later um i kind of just like to map out and then go in it's a lot easier to build than to remove and if you're working on someone and you feel like you're being rushed what happens is you tend to over apply so here i'm using mac give me sun now if i would have went in with mac give me sun off the bat it might have been a little too strong so again layer and build and deepen as you go so now i'm using a makeup geek blush and it's a nice peachy color i love this one i love makeup geek blushes they're nice and they're matte and they're pigmented and i'm using this brush what was that from Too faced Yes, two face. <laughs> I'm like bugging out right now. Yes, the Hula um, blush brush, and I love it. Now I'm using the ColourPop Kathleen Lights um, collaboration, her eye pencil. I love it. It's a nice rustic brown. And then I'm applying that same burgundy shade from the Modern Renaissance palette underneath her eye. Now you guys all need this brush. If you are freelancing, you need this today, yesterday, tomorrow. It's the Kat Von D shade light eye brush. It is so bomb. Seriously, you're going to not regret it i literally want to have five of these it blends the under eye like no other it isn't too harsh on their eyes because like i said if your um client has contacts on or has sensitive eyes you do not want to poke them in the eye so this brush is perfect it has this nice detail side so i'm using that to kind of deepen right underneath and as you can see her eye color is just popping so much at this point because these nice red tones are just bringing out that like green and hazel in her eyes um, I love that Kathleen Lights ColourPop pencil too because it really makes green eyes pop and brown eyes, but especially green eyes. It just brings out the red tones and it just pops like no other and I really love it. So I'm just blending that out, smoking it out, basically copying everything that we have on the lid underneath her eyes. So the same gold, same kind of brown, in the same kind of order. So in that halo kind of effect, deepening on the sides darkening on the sides and now I'm just reapplying supernova as you can see it was kind of fading a little bit so I just need to make sure it's popping right there <laughs> now I'm using a dip brow pomade and I'm using the dark brown and I'm using this benefit brush which I really like it's an angled brush they just came out with it and I'm just defining her brows a little more as you can see that other brow is just it's nice and it's shaped but it's missing something it's missing some volume and it's missing some color and some depth so I love going in with the dip brow. Um, I feel like with the dip brow, you just need to like own it and don't let it own you. You know, it can tend to look really fake and Sharpie-ish if you just put too much or apply too much pressure. But once you get it down packed, this product is going to be your life savior because it literally doesn't budge. It lasts forever. It's waterproof and it just adds a lot of definition and it makes it look like the client has thick, luscious eyebrow hairs. It literally just looks so good and it just brings the look to the next level. 
you know I'm gonna highlight like crazy. So I first went in with Laura Geller Gilded Honey. I've been obsessed with Gilded Honey. As soon as summertime comes around, I'm obsessed with gold highlights. So I'm packing on Gilded Honey and I'm just applying this obviously to her cheeks, to her nose, her upper lip, anywhere where I typically highlight, which is basically the whole entire face. She's dry, so I'm not afraid to use a ton of highlight because she wants that glow, you know. With dry skin, you need to fake the glow. And even though we've been applying a lot of hydrating products, we still want the skin to look super duper glowy. So now I'm just touching up the blush because sometimes after highlighting, the blush kind of disappears. As you can see, we're having a blast. <laughs> Try not to make them laugh when you're doing their lip and when you're doing their eyes. That is very important. <laughs> I'm just touching up her brow bone color and you don't want to poke them that's why i was saying you don't want to make them laugh when you're doing like their eyeliner because it is very scary because you're touching their eyeballs and you don't want to poke them and now i'm just further more contouring i'm using a mac sculpt powder in sculpt and i'm also using what's this other color shadester i love sculpt and shadester they are amazing sculpt powders from mac if you like emphasize from mac you're gonna love Sculpt and Shadester. They're just great contour and bronzing powders and they're so underrated. And I just really, I, I use them pretty much every time I have a client. Um, now I'm going in with Galactic Bashful. Um, it's funny, Natalie hunted down two Bashfuls for me and I was like, well, we gotta use it. Like she found it in um, a drugstore and she bought them for me. And so I paid her obviously, but I was like, you know what? We need to use it, okay, because you hunted this down and we just need to see how it looks on you. On her, it's a lot more like pink. On me, it's a little bit more of like a natural nudie brownie nude. Unless they change the formula or something, on her it was showing up very pink. So I'm just, you know, following her natural lip line. She didn't want anything too pouty. But I'm just lightening it up a little bit and I'm using um, Ofra Sao Paulo. This is one of my favorite colors. Honestly, it's been a go-to for me for hot minute right now so now i'm contouring her nose you guys already know illamasqua heroin is my favorite for contouring the nose it just looks so natural and i'm using a luxie angled eyeshadow brush luxie angled brushes are my favorite for contouring the nose i just feel like it just is so precise this brush is also amazing wayne goss oh my god i'm obsessed with the wayne goss brushes they really hug the socket they really hug that crease and they just Applies so much product, but in the most beautiful way. It's really crazy. Um, now I'm just using um, some Sigma brushes, some MAC brushes to further blend and to just intensify everything a little more with the same colors. I'm using the same Modern Renaissance palette, but I'm just seeing what needs a little more definition. I'm hydrating her with the MAC Fix Plus. Always warn your client before you're about to spray them. And having this fan is literally life-changing. Thank you so much. I mean, this literally changed my life. Having a fan was just so amazing. Um, what else? I'm like talking so freaking fast. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of video and seeing this process. Um, let me know like what constructive, constructive criticism you have with these kinds of videos. Like, or what other ideas you want to see. Like here, I'm basically just, you know, repeating the steps, cleaning up the brows. Like, do you guys want to actually see this part? Because I was thinking of just cutting out any parts that are repetitive. Like here... I'm just literally concealing her brows one more time and this is what I do you know I don't know if you guys want to see it or do you think it's just too repetitive but this is how I work I work in layers and the result is gorgeous I'm using Tatcha luminous dewy skin mist and then this is my favorite at the moment Scandinavia bridal it's amazing and I'm just fanning her perfecting her and now we could take our pictures and that's the look I hope you guys enjoyed it I mean look at those gorgeous eyes <laughs> Bye guys. Mm -hmm.